Hello, and welcome to Devin's Workshop. Today, I will be showing off the TR Cowbell version 1.2. I haven't really made a YouTube video demonstrating what the TR Cowbell is, uh, what it does, what the goals are for it. Uh, so I will be describing some of that now that I have a case and it looks somewhat like a real thing. And thank you to Foamy Guy, uh, who is a coder for Adafruit for coding up and Naradoc, both contributed some amazing uh, code for AsyncIO. Um, so thank you to them for bringing the cowbell to life with some really neat code um, that turns it into an actual MIDI sequencer. And that's what the primary goal of this was, uh, a MIDI sequencer. So obviously it is TR-808 inspired. Uh, it has the same color scheme as TR-808, and the orange case will eventually be black. I'm just printing orange because that's what I have on hand. Uh, and this is PET-G uh, filament, not PLA. So this is really high temp, very durable. This is similar to Legos in how durable it is. It's really durable stuff. Uh, I use 20% infill, so it's not all just a solid chunk. So let's go over some of the, the features of the cowbell. And obviously you can see some displays sitting out over here. They're unused, uh, but that's for a demonstration, and I'll get into that in a, in a little bit. Uh, so at the heart of the TR Cowbell is the Raspberry Pi Pico. This is, You can use either a Pico or a Pico W. Uh, the Pico is like $4. The Pico W is about $6 currently. And the only difference is that one is wireless and one is not. Uh, uses the same exact footprint, same exact pinouts. But this hole right here is used for cable routing. So if you are going to add, uh, let's say, you know, an external display for jumpers, you would use these pins here, or you could use the the white um, the white GPI breakouts, and then you can route using that hole underneath of the case all the way over to here kind of thing. So there's a channel cut underneath going from here all the way to the end of the case. And that's just for cable management underneath. And we have some navigation buttons here. Uh, they don't do anything by default. Like they're only here for you to program. The entire TR Cowbell PCB that's underneath of here is only a breakout board for the Pico. So it takes all of these GPIO inputs, breaks them out, and goes to all this different stuff. Without the Pico here, this board does absolutely nothing. Here are tiny little interlocking squares. And you slide in these bays um, into a magnetic connector. So let's say we have like a tiny little magnetic connector, you know, positioned like right there. Um, and it would be embedded, it would be embedded flush as a, a magnetic in interconnect between the bays. So a modular interconnect bay design that would feed power, ground, data, and clock. So it would be just for ITC devices, sorry. SPY is just, that's just too many pins for SPY. The interlocking bay design so you would just slide these bays and then underneath of here somewhere would be the magnetic connector probably close to the latch mechanism the problem with this particular design locking rail this interlocking rail system that I came up with is way too small I didn't realize when I was building it how tiny it would be. It's only like three millimeters tall. And this section right here is, all, is like half a millimeter. So I got my scale completely wrong. The whole thing is going to have to be redesigned. Um, but I ran into um, a, another design problem uh, that I wanted to highlight uh, when doing some type of modular interconnecting design for any of you out there who are into this stuff and want to do something that has a modular interconnect 
probably with magnets because magnets make the most sense right now. So since these, since these interlocking bays are have to be redesigned, and they're actually physically molded into the top part of this case, I can't just make them bigger. So what I'm going to redesign the whole thing and make this entire surface flat this whole entire surface flat and then use heat set inserts which most of the case that's the entire case is designed around heat the concept of heat set inserts the PCB is mounted in like God, 30 different places with heat set inserts if I were to take the PCB off you would just see heat inserts everywhere it's got some hardware in it it's it's part of the reason why it's so hefty and heavy is because there's so much metal uh, heat insert hardware in here plus the case feet so we have I2C displays as an example um, little joysticks for I was thinking mod mod wheel pitch bend uh, because these don't have the center click so these are only really good for two axis which would be great for mod wheels and pitch bend so imagine these mounted on a little bay that you can slide in and just have mod wheel whenever you want um, but again, the problem with this is that they're kind of limited to three little tiny ones. So I'm thinking about scrapping the entire three modular bay idea and just going with one large modular bay with one large modular faceplate. So you can mount whatever you want to the one faceplate and then rack in, um, I guess I'll have three magnetic interconnects for one faceplate. These two displays in particular uh, do not have ITC addressing. So these two displays will have the same ITC address. So you could use something like a, uh, a multiplexer. This one happens to be the Adafruit PCA95488 port. So if you intend on putting like a ton of peripherals then you could go with uh, something like this. This is the 8-channel version. The 4-channel version, plenty. Like the 4-channel version, will you'll be able to add like 100 devices. So you don't need an 8-channel. Eight 8-channel eight is for like 1,000 devices. So as for actual power, you can use the Stemma Hub. This is another cool little addition from Adafruit. This one is the Stemma QT Hub. And let's say you mount this inside the case, you know, upside down, and you can run Stemma cables to the Stemma port. If you really wanted to, you could route the wires underneath, use these little holes, and then just have a temp sensor inside connected to, to something. So the, the main point is that I originally designed this with the sole purpose of being a sequencer. And halfway through the design process, I changed my mind and was like, it would be cool if I could expand this to do other things. That's where I'm at uh, with this project. Uh, I've been working on it for months, and now it's at the point where I have a, at least some semblance of a case. Um, not everything fits quite right. As you can see, um, the, the accuracy of the 3D printer was not what I thought it was. So there are like some parts that don't quite fit up right. I didn't account for <laughs> all the tiny little solder joints on the, on the underside of the PCB, taking up a little bit of extra space. Um, because below the PCB is just a perfectly flat plane. <laughs> And there's no risers for for the motherboard, so the motherboard is sitting in here much higher than it actually should be, which is why the case won't close. It's basically the space that the the pins on the through hole pins going through the through the motherboard that are soldered up are taking up. That that that's where that's coming from. Uh, so uh, huge design mistake. However, I can fix that by just going in to every tiny little place there's a, a solder pinhole and like drilling a little hole with a, a Dremel or just a big drill 
and making um, custom holes all all along the way, and then then it should it should sit flush, I think. And uh, I might end up tackling that today, because um, I would like to see this whole thing come together and sit flush. And if you're thinking uh, about the the cut lines in the middle, they are staggered because of the case feet it provide and the rigidity of this. Remember, this is like a really huge thick Lego. It's just massively thick and heavy. I I have not weighed it yet, but it's it's. It's got some, it's got some weight to it. Yeah, the whole thing's really rigid. I can press down on the middle here. All I want, it's it, it, this thing is solid, 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 uh, which makes using the buttons like really enjoyable. Like this is actually more solid than my regular keyboard. And there will be a second batch of boards going out, uh, hopefully sometime January, maybe early February. Uh, I'm still sourcing some of the parts. If you're interested in getting just the PCB in order to build a kit yourself, yeah, um, feel free to contact me. I'll, I'll, I'll send you one. I still have, uh, I don't know, I want to say 15 left, something like that. Not many. I've gone through quite a few already. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, there, and the list of the amount of these out in the wild is, is growing. So the second batch, no ETA on when those are going out. Uh, I do have a list. So if you're on the list for the second batch, you know it. And the second batch is identical to the, the first, um, except that it, traces will automatically be cut and, and, re, and done for you prior to them even going out. Like I'm going to cut the traces to force new users to do the bodge fix as part of their build. Uh, and that way I don't have to worry about different owners being in different places in terms of the hardware. Like I want everyone to be on the same playing field in terms of hardware with the bodge fix. I would love to be able to like make these available as, as a kit to everyone. Yeah, it's almost 100% out of root electronics in there. Except for the PCB. Yeah, everything's sourced from Adafruit. Except the buttons. Buttons I had to get elsewhere. Just the tops of the buttons. But all the step switches, the Pico, the anodized um, encoder, rotary encoder knob, the rotary encoder itself, breakout board, Stemma, uh, sensors. Some of the components on the PCB I didn't get from Adafruit uh, because they didn't have any, but a lot of the components on the actual PCB itself came from Adafruit, including like the resistors. They didn't have the Opta isolator or the TRS jacks, I don't think. Um, but I would love to see them carry all the stuff uh, that would be needed in order for people to build these. Oh yeah, and one of the neat things about having the, the large interlocking bays is that you could add a, a much larger display if you wanted. So you could have a large display and then you could also have like little thumbsticks like next to it. So one of the neat things about enclosure designs you can add functionality beyond what you could with only a PCB. So I highly recommend 3D printers. These things are just fantastic because you can extend so much stuff just with a, with a good enclosure. Uh, you could program a MIDI sequencer to go get you the weather and tell you the, the latest weather. Actually, for most programmers, that would be a very neat handy, handy feature because they don't go outside much. <laughs> What's the weather like outside today? I don't know. Let's check on the little digital display device instead of looking out the window. So that's a TR cowbell in its infancy still because of design related issues. But hopefully everyone can see that this is going to shape up to be a really cool project and I've had just an absolute blast making it. 2023 will be
bringing in a lot of music to microcontrollers. Arduino just came out with a synth. At the same time that I started designing this, Korg, Korg, like actual Korg, came out and said they're, they're a bit, they have a Pico-based design, which is really, really cool because it means that everything's on the right track. Like, if Korg is doing this stuff, this is the right way. 2023, MIDI music, Arduino, Raspberry Pi, Python, C++ microcontrollers, keyboards, mice, peripherals, this is the way.